Hey everyone, Juno2000 here coming at you with a review of the new recent Exorcist movie, The Exorcist Believers, coming out from Universal and Blumhouse Studios, and it just released back in October 9th, um, I, I forgot what date, but October 9th, I guess, but, um, yeah, this movie, I went to, I, I saw this movie at lookmovies.com, and, I was going a little expectation of seeing this movie, and this movie wasn't bad. I was expecting to be really mad at this movie. I thought it was going to be an extreme piece of shit like Halloween Ends, which still to this day, I refuse to get that movie. Even if anybody offers me Halloween Ends, I'm not going to have that movie in my collection because that is the worst Horror sequel that I ever fucking saw. It's so bad that I rather watch, I rather watch Jason Goes to Hell ten times over that, or Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the Next Generation, fifteen times over that bullshit. Yeah, that that Halloween Ends was a piece of shit in my opinion, and it was pretty much a damn remake of John Carmen's Christine, which is my all time favorite movie. I love John Carmen's Christine. And seeing that as like a redone remake in Halloween Ends with Corey Cunningham and Michael Myers just want me just made me want to just watch John Carpenter's classic instead, not that Halloween Ends bullshit. Still to this day, I say fuck Halloween Ends. I thought Hall Exorcist Believers, because I know that David Gordon Green and Blumhouse are involved in this one, and I thought this was gonna be an extreme piece of shit. But surprisingly, it wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't a good movie either. Like, it's kind of a mixed mix, but it was not like a terrible, frustrating piece of shit. Because after, for weeks and weeks, I've been hearing these bad reviews that this movie just been taking in theaters. It's been not doing good. It's been getting a lot of fucking shit reviews. But I went, I went, uh, I saw this on Look Movies, and yeah. I didn't mind this movie. It does have some problems to it, which this will be also a spoilers review, folks. If you haven't seen it, go check it out first before seeing my review. But if you don't give a shit about this movie and you just want to hear the spoilers, go on ahead and listen. But I'm going to do a timestamp for folks who want to still cheat this movie. But on, uh, I got to see this on Look Movies. It's about this, fo this, this, this guy, this guy who's having a baby with his wife, and they're in Haiti, and then everything goes bad where a big earthquake goes on. Back when the earthquake happened in Haiti back in 2011, which is kind of like putting on that real subject of the ha the Haiti's um earthquake disaster, and yeah, everything goes well. Everything goes very chaotic, very scary, intense throughout that earthquake they did a good job with the earthquake and he has a decision of either have his wife live or the baby live but none but both cannot be alive because one has to live and he has that decision until like later at the end of the movie when it's revealed what it is but all in all it gives you that illusion like what did he decided and now it's like 13 years later, he has his daughter that's grown up that goes to, that goes to like, I don't know, elementary or middle school, but he has a daughter and he likes to be around with her. And even though the mom's not there, she, he, he's happy to have his daughter around and stuff. And he's a photographer. So he's a photographer and his daughter goes to school and, and she's friends with this other little white girl that is in the movie and then they end up like going into the woods after school and they go missing after they do like some Ouija stuff and it's like three days of them being missing they went going searching 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 from like the homeless compounds to like shelters and area in the woods area but all in all they get found in a barn three days later by farmers and they're at they're like exam for like s sexual assault 
stuff and they're examining the hospital and then they're like acting weird at the hospital of course it's supposed to be a nod to like Reagan acting weird in the hospital but on and on they just go to the hospital they get exam they go back home to their parents and then the girls being weird to to her dad like there's 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 like she's like following him she's like talking to herself just going crazy like you know it's a possession like the devil's going through her possession like how reagan went through the possession as well and then the little other little the white little girl she um she's getting all through possession too and then she's in the church and she goes crazy everything goes weird and just chaotic throughout this movie and yeah i didn't mind this movie and yeah, Ellen Burstyn does come back in this movie, and wow, around 90 years old, she still looks good looking, like, damn, like, she's still f- kicking in at 90 years old, and all in all, she, it's cool to see her, but all in all, I felt like she was just there for a paycheck, but all in all, which I'll get into a spoilers around this half of the review, because it does get spoilers to half of the movie so spoilers in five four three two one spoilers all right folks this is the spoilers of the movie well ellen burson comes back as chris mcneil and she is trent and the the the, the the main guy the main character the, the father of the black girl she he, he's trying to find some answers with ellen burson and how the possession went through with Reagan and stuff. And then Ellen Burstyn talks to him and they go to meet up with the little girls and she sees how possessed they are. The devil has them. And then when she goes meets with the white girl that's possessed, the demon like that's possessing her recognizes her and remembers her. And then they, ha- they, they have, um, Chris McNeil just go and just boom, do an exorcism, like a half ass exorcism, only to get stabbed in the eye by a crucifix that she's hiding. And then she comes out and just stabs Ellen Burson in the two eye sockets and she's blind. And yeah. So yeah, Ellen Burson gets taken out after a 10 minute screen time in the movie. Yeah, so she is blind. That's probably the only disappointing part is that it, it doesn't make sense why she's killed, like she she's taken out of the middle of the movie like come on like you couldn't use her at the finale of the exorcism which which is the part of the finale where you got to see it, you see all the f- people like the priest and different other priests people are joining into the exorcism and joining forces to exorcise the girls with the devil coming out and stuff and freeing them. You could have had Ellen Burstyn's Chris McNeil character in that. And you could have had like, okay, she got stabbed in the eye. It doesn't, it wouldn't make sense if she was like, okay, she was attacked during the, the left finale of the exorcism. But it felt like she got stabbed in the middle of the movie. It just feels half assed And like, like what? It wouldn't make more sense if she was in the finale. And then, okay, you got her stabbed in the eye in the finale. Okay, that makes sense to have her be injured and why she is in the hospital. But come on, like, you couldn't use her in the finale. But that was, like, probably the one con, like, one of the cons I have with the movie is, like, come on. They couldn't have Ellen Burstyn in the finale f- exorcism. But all in all, they, they, all the priests join forces to exorcise the two little girls to free the devil out. And it's all, like, less than like 25 minutes of this exorcism and the devil spitting out evil shit and everything goes chaotic one catholic priest goes in and is getting like the trying to get the devil out but his part doesn't go through well and he gets his neck twist and back like you know like how reagan has her head twist and how she killed bill burke dennings with um you know when he killed she twists his head 360 and then throws him off the the ledge of the of her room through the window. 
he does that. She, they do that to the priest, the Catholic priest, and he gets killed during the exorcism. And then the devil says, you're going to have to only choose one that will live and stay and one will die in hell. But the stupid white, the, 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 white, the white little girls, her stupid dad opened his mouth because they were trying to keep their mouth shut about like this decision and just try to exercise the devil out. But the stupid dad just opened his mouth and he wants he wants his daughter to live. But guess what? It was a bit of a psych. Like fuck you, like you got psych because it was like oh he picked the the, the, the his daughter to survive and the black girl to die. Nope, it was a big psych because he was screwed over and the devil screwed him over and his daughter died. But the black guy's daughter survived the exorcism. She was free from the devil. But the devil took the, the white girl's soul and she died in hell. But I don't know. But if she's going to be back in the sequel, like they're going to give her back or something from the devil or something. Because they, they're going to do next movies. But yeah, the priest, die, one of the, the Catholic priests died. And the little possessed girl dies at the end. And everything is like back to normal for the black little girl to be returned with her black father and he's finally finding faith and also the the twist that you see at the end when he was making that now we finally know what he made that decision oh does he want his wife or his daughter to live he actually wanted his wife to live then his daughter living but Something made him change his decision and he changed it to have his daughter live and his wife die. But yeah, that was the reveal at the end. What he made, because cause the beginning, after the earthquake, his wife was injured. They were deciding who wants to live, your wife or daughter. But he does make the decision and it's kind of like mean, but but like yeah, like, she's going to die in a serious situation of getting birth, but all in all, he just made his decision to have his daughter instead. But all in all, he had his daughter come back from the, de like, she's free from the devil, she's not possessed no more, and, yeah, right, and it turns out, Ella Burson's in the hospital, she did not die from her injuries, she's all bandaged up. And she thinks that it's the black guy coming to come and thank her, but it's actually Reagan, Linda Blair's Reagan McNeil. She comes and appears at the end of the movie, and hugs her mom. And she, he hugs her, her mom's character, the Chris McNeil, the Ellen Burson plays. And yeah, they they reunite. They hug each other. The black girl's out with the devil. She has she's not possessed no more, but her friend. Sadly, got taken by the devil. And that's when the movie ends. And you get the Exorcist theme song at the end credits with a remix of it. But pretty much you still get the tubular bells at the end credits. All right. But, yep, yeah, that's spoil. Yep, that's the Exorcist Believers. I feel like some of the possession stuff was a little generic because, of course, I've seen all these possession movies where it's like the same shit. But but the, the first Exorcist is the best possession movie. Nothing can beat it because it is very powerful and very scary as fuck. Like the Exorcist from 1973 is a classic. Um, I did review the franchise. I did like the first. The first one is the best. That's the fucking masterpiece. Part two is a boring mess of a movie, but it's a laughable mess because it's a bad movie. But there's some stuff I do like from it, but it's a boring mess of a movie. Exorcist 3 Legion is a badass sequel, criminally underrated. And then they did the two prequels, The Beginning and Dominion. But The Beginning, I would say I like better, even though there's some shitty CGI in it. I still like The Beginning better. Dominion, I think, is the worst Exorcist film. That's fucking boring as shit <laughs> yeah i still think dominion is a piece of shit it's a boring ass movie <clears throat> but um yeah they got the tv show of the actresses from fox 
which I don't know if anybody remembers that shit. I did not give a crap about the Fox TV show, The Exorcist. I just saw a few episodes from season one and just was done with it. I know they did a second season and it got canceled, but I didn't care about seeing the rest of the episodes and season and also seeing season two. I didn't care. I just felt it was a it was just a boring ass show and it didn't even feel like The Exorcist to me. It just felt like a meh generic TV show on Fox. But and then now we got The Exorcist Believers and this wasn't a horrible piece of shit. It wasn't like a insulting fucking movie. Like I was expecting it to be like Halloween ends that fucking bad. But all in all, it wasn't a bad movie. It didn't even feel like a reboot at all. Like it felt like a fourth movie. Like you would just subtitle this The Exorcist Four Believer. That's how I would subtitle it. Just Exorcist Four The Believer. And yeah, this doesn't feel like a reboot at all. It does not at, at all. Yeah, you could just watch the one, and then the second film, and then the third film, and then you can watch this as the fourth movie, and that's it. I'm not looking forward to like the the next two sequels because I just feel like this is it, one and done. And I heard that it's getting tanked in theaters, so after all the bad shit it's been getting, it might be going to um streaming, as I heard. But on and on. It's not a piece of shit. I wasn't mad at it, but it wasn't a great movie because it is a bit generic. But all in all, it wasn't a horrible piece of shit at all. But I didn't mind it, even though I'll wait till the movie comes out when it's price drop. I'm not going to get it immediately, but I don't mind this movie at all. I would say it would be like a fourth movie to watch, but I would not can consider it better as like Exorcist 3 Legion. That's the best Exorcist sequel. Nothing can beat it at all. Exorcist 3 is the best fucking sequel. And yeah, that's my review of The Exorcist Believers, which I call it aka The Exorcist 4 Believer, because that it doesn't feel like a reboot. And what's your guys' thoughts about it? Do you think this was a decent movie, or do you think it was a total piece of shit? Like everybody was saying out to be. I don't think it was a piece of shit, but it wasn't like a good movie either. But it's like a mixed, mixed movie. But it wasn't like a frustrating movie at all. And some people say it was boring. I didn't find it boring because I got to see it on the same day with um watching the nun on look movie on look movies as well. I got to see um the nun two, and that was a boring fucking movie. I would say this was better than the nun two because that the nun two was a boring ass movie. But the Exorcist Believers, not a terrible movie. I would say it's a mixed mixed movie. I give it a six and a half out of ten. That's my rating for the movie, a six and a half out of ten. A mixed, mixed movie, but not a horrible, p insulting piece of shit like Halloween ends. And yeah, that's my review for The Exorcist Believer, folks. Hit the like, subscribe, comment what you thought about this movie, hate it or liked it. Leave in the comment, folks, and have a good day, everybody. Take care. This is June of 2000. Bye-bye.